Hi everybody, this is Mr. Bureau from Staten Island Tech. I'm going to be showing you a little bit of AutoCAD 2021 today, just as like an introduction and to show you a little bit around. Uh, right now I have a blank drawing up on the screen and, and in it, before the end of the video, I'm going to draw an object in 2D and then bring it into 3D. Before I do that, I'm going to show you a couple of samples. The first one would be uh, a site plan. This is an actual site plan um, that comes as a sample file inside AutoCAD when you buy it. And it's of a county in New Hampshire called Nashua. The focus of this particular drawing is the layout of a high school from an aerial view. You'll see over here, this is the high school outline and there are surrounding parking lots and access to those parking lots from the roads. Over here you'll see a baseball field, softball field, a field house, a track, some tennis courts, a couple of other fields, trees in the surrounding area, and then as I pull out more and you see the entire site, it's surrounded by roads with some housing and some cul-de-sacs, kind of set up in the way a New Jersey County would be, but obviously New Hampshire. Uh, this is the layout view, and on the layout view, which is like a simulated piece of paper, you'll see a lot of notes as well as other smaller views set up to the side. All of that is set up after the model has been created in the model space. Inside this black area is where the model is actually drawn, and there's a lot to it. Uh, the person that's making this obviously had to have a full database of measurements as well as the, the cooperation of a lot of people to get this information. Surprisingly, a 10th grader at Staten Island Tech would be capable of doing this. It is very complex, but only in a way where it's heavy and dense on material and would take a very long time to do. But as far as the geometry is concerned and the skill level in AutoCAD, it is certainly something that's capable by one of our students. And uh, there's a lot of things built into the program to help you do that, such as organizational stuff through layers, as well as um, other types of temporary things that can be hidden. The next page is a simpler piece. This is a, a 2D drawing of a robotic arm. You can see the lines that are uh, colored white are meant to be object lines or part of the actual arm. But there's some blue lines that are functioning as center lines to show you the center of this particular joint or the where the, the, the screw is that holds this thing together. And on the top, there's a few more center lines to show where the arm also comes off another joint. And then the blue, I'm sorry, the purple lines, uh, those function as hidden lines. And those just represent surfaces that are present but not viewable in this particular view. Some other ones as well, of course. Over here you'll see um, the same object drawn from a top-down view. That's common for being done in the model space. Everything that eventually will be visible on paper or rendered has to be drawn in the model space. Here's a similar drawing. This is the wheel of a trolley. A trolley is like a, an above-ground subway car that also rides along a track. You could see how the wheels kind of would grab onto the track over here. Same thing, we have some white object lines, purple hidden lines, and blue center lines. In this particular case, you don't see any dashes or patterns, but it's the same idea. And of course, this would be like a front view and a side view. This particular drawing over here is a, of a basketball hoop that's being exploded to show its construction. It doesn't look very um, polished, but that's because it's being shown in a shaded view in here. Uh, if this were to be rendered, it would look uh, very realistic. And just to show you that it is in 3D, I could click onto it and then rotate the view around it by just moving the view cube. And then lastly, I'll show you something done by the same person, a colleague named Rudy Meraki. Here is a wheel, and it appears to be in 2D, but I'll throw this into a 3D perspective, and then I will turn the shading on here and you can see that it is indeed something in 3D. Once you turn the shading on, you can see more like where the edges come in and a lot of the geometry that's necessary to create something like that. That brings me to the drawing that I'm gonna do for you today. Uh, it's also something that's very, very heavily geometric, however simple in construction. It's a fidget spinner. I'm not really a fan of fidget spinners, but since we're demonstrating things in AutoCAD today, I think it's one of the best things to show to be drawn based on its geometry. Um, all fidget spinners have four bearings in them. A bearing is like a, 
a circular object that has some stuff in it that allows it to turn and spin very quickly so it has a rotation built into it. So first I'll draw a circle. Circles by default in AutoCAD are drawn with respect to radius. Uh, I'm going to be using diameters in my construction because that's how um, the fidget spinner is described with the outer diameter for each bearing of 22 millimeters and an inner diameter of 8 millimeters. So I'm just going to pick a random start point over here and then I'm going to click diameter on the command bar and type 8 for the inner circle of that particular bearing. I'll click circle again and now I'm going to use a feature called snap to snap to the center of that existing circle so they have shared centers and then I will choose diameter again and type 22 for a 22 millimeter diameter. So that's the center bearing of the fidget spinner. The next bearing is going to be placed um, four millimeters away from it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a temporary line from the right outer edge over here again using the snap feature. I'm going to have that extend four millimeters to the right so I'm going to use a button to lock into a direct horizontal line and then I'll just stretch the mouse out, type 4, and press enter. And as you can see, I now have a uh, straight line with a distance of 4 millimeters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that existing circle or the bearing and put it right at the end of that particular piece. So I'm going to select it first, choose the copy command, copy it from this particular point over here. So that's attached to my mouse. And then I'll use the snap feature again to put it on the edge. So that is lying exactly four millimeters away from the first bearing. And that's set. Next, I'm going to use a convenient feature called Polar Array, which creates rotational symmetry. I'm going to choose the feature up here. And then I will select the objects to be rotated, which is the outer bearing only. I'll press Enter. And then I'll select the center point of the actual rotation. And once I click, you'll see that it generates a total of six of them but I only want three, so I'm going to change the setting on the top to just show three of the bearings. Press enter to accept that, and then checkbox to close the array. And now, as you can see, I have uh, independent floating bearings sitting exactly at the points of an equilateral triangle that would be centered on the center bearing with 100 degrees of rotation, 120 degrees, excuse me, 120 degrees of rotation in between each of the sets. So those are the four bearings, they're in their correct positions. Now I just have to put together the housing, which is a little bit more complex, but I have a good base to start with. I'm going to use a command called offset. Offset creates either lines or circles from existing lines and circles, and it either pushes them further away or inward uh, a set distance. So I'm going to offset the outer circles here by a distance of four millimeters because I would like the plastic housing to be four millimeters away from all of the bearings on the outer port portions. So I'll press enter to accept my four millimeter distance. Then I'll select the outer bearing diameter and extend it. And as you can see, as I'm doing this, the new circles that are being created are actually touching the bearing on the inside. And that's just further confirmation that it, things are measured in the correct position those three new circles are going to become the outer edge of the fidget spinner. And just for clarity, I'm going to start coloring these particular circles. I'll color the outer bearings red and the inner bearing I will color uh, yellow. And the outside pieces, which will become part of the plastic housing, are color blue. Now I have to join those particular pieces with some connective tissue. And the way I'm going to do that is by drawing another part of a circle, but it's just going to be a curved portion that joins them on the outside in a very smooth way. And knowing the geometry of a fidget spinner, I know it would be uh, basically part of a circle that would have the same diameter as the outside plastic portion here which would be the 22 millimeters plus a four millimeter part on the outside on both sides, which would be a total of 30 um, millimeters. So all I need to do here is pick to choose the command, which is called fillet. 
and then I'll select that I want to type this based on the, the radius, which would be in this case uh, 15. And then I'll cl uh, click on these two things, and as you can see, it very, very smoothly fits that in there. And I'll do that again here, and here, and here, and here. So now I have the complete outer housing with some extra lines. I'll use the trim feature to get rid of those lines. Just a matter of clicking the pieces I don't want. It uses existing edges to know which ones to be cut out. It looks complete, however, these pieces are still separate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of them and use the join command to actually join them into one piece. And as you can see, that's done. Next, I'm gonna flip it into a 3D perspective and I'll use the press pull command to actually thicken the object and give it its, its uh, seven millimeter height. First, I'll do the bearings. I click inside that particular um, bounded area, move the mouse up, type seven, because I want it to be a height of seven. Just doing the bearings first, because they are gonna be separate 3D objects. And then before I move on, I'm going to color those bearings the same way. I accidentally selected all of them, but I'll just change the middle one again. Red for the outer bearings, and the middle one I want to be yellow. And now I'll do the press pull command again for the plastic portion. Raise that up, a height of seven millimeters. I have that set. Click on that particular piece and I'll change it to be blue. And now I'm gonna slide over everything just so I don't get stuck accidentally selecting my original lines, which are still lying on that plane. I'll use the move command and I'll slide the 3D portion over. Now, just to show you what it looks like, I'll turn the 2D wireframe view off and change it to be shaded with edges. So as you can see, everything is, is sitting nicely together. And just to give it a little bit more polished feature, I'm gonna round off these edges over here using something called Fillet Edge. In fact, let me just change this to just be shaded instead of with edges. Okay, so I'll use fill edge, which is a 3D command for rounding corners. I'm using a millimeter, uh, two millimeter radius over here for the fillet. That preview looks good, and now we're gonna use the, the chain feature to make sure it goes all the way around the object. Press enter to accept, and again, and it gives me that nice rounded edge, which can be colored as well. I'll repeat the command, choose one of the edges, chain it, and that is complete. I'll click on the object and just rotate it around with the grid. You can see that it has like a nice polished view to it. Pretty simple. And that's it. Hopefully you'll enjoy using AutoCAD for the first semester. Thank you very much.